Hi, it's Tim from Oracle Base. In this video, we're going to discuss the Oracle Data Guide functionality introduced in Oracle 12C Release 2. We create a table with an ID column and a data column. The data column is going to hold the JSON data. We have a check constraint on that column that says data is JSON. So Oracle is going to police that for us. It's going to make sure that the data in that column is valid JSON data. Let's insert some data into the table. In this first row, we've got user information, including nested information for an address and contact details. This row has a Twitter handle in the contact details. If we look at the next row, that doesn't. That'll be important later. Before we move on, we'll gather some statistics on this table. Now comes the important bit. We create a JSON search index on the JSON data column. From 12.2 onwards, this also creates a JSON data guide, which is a description of the data inside the JSON data column. We can see the contents of the JSON data guide by using the DBMS JSON package, specifically the get index data guide function. Scrolling through the data, we can see things like the element name, its data type, its length, and a preferred name for it. That'll be important later. If we gather statistics on the index, we get even more information in the data guide. Let's display the contents of the data guide and see what we have now. We now have information about the high and low values, the last analyzed date, the presence of nulls, and also the frequency of this element in the data. We only put a Twitter handle in one of the two rows, and so, not surprisingly, we see that Twitter handles have a frequency of 50% in our data guide. In 18C, we got the user JSON data guide fields view, which allows us to see the data guide information much more easily. Here we can see the JSON path, the type of data, and then the length of the data. So far, all we've done is discuss the contents of the data guide. So let's actually do something with it. If we look back at our original table, we just had an ID and data column. Let's call the add virtual columns procedure, passing in the table name, the column name, and then the data guide information. The table now contains a whole bunch of virtual columns named after the original column name and then the JSON element. Those column names are quite ugly, so let's get rid of them and create some with better names. We can use the rename column procedure to create a mapping between a specific element name and a column name we want to associate with it. Now if we create those virtual columns again, they'll work in exactly the same way, but they'll have much better names. With these virtual columns in place, we can query the contents of the JSON data as if it were relational data. An alternative to creating virtual columns in the base table is to create a view instead. Let's drop the virtual columns and then alter the name mappings again to remove the DG underscore. This time, we'll use the create view procedure, passing in a view name and then the table and column name this view will be derived from, and also the data guide. If we describe the view, we can see it has the primary key column, and then columns to represent all of the JSON elements. We can then query from this view, just like any other read-only view. Thanks for watching. As always, you can find links to my articles on this subject in the description.